Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we've got the lovely Flying Scotsman. Now, it won the vote, and in the case of this video, towards the end, we shall be fitting DCC sound to it, okay? We'll be using the TTS sound decoder by Hornby. Now, if you are a DC user, you can do the reverse of the disassembly that I do with this loco in the reverse order, so to speak, and you'll be just fine getting it back together. So hopefully there's enough actual information in this video for you to crack on and see what's inside your loco. Right then, uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, maybe think about subscribing. But let's get on with the video, shall we? Okay, so we're at the test track. I've wanted to show you the controller I'm actually using. Um, as you can see, this is what it is, that's the number. Um, I've just got the simple forwards, backwards in the, the dial. This is just to check on DC before I do any of my normal work on my locos. So let's go over to the loco and we shall test it. And here she is. Now uh, we'll go forwards and I'll ramp this up and hopefully we'll get something. And it moves. I'm only slowly increasing the throttle. And she's moving. Slow that down backwards. So you can kind of see what inputs I'm putting into the loco as it does its thing. So I'll, I'll, we're going forwards again and I'll ramp it up slowly. It jumps a little bit and then it goes. So that is indication to me that there's actually a bit of friction on the um, drive mechanism. So it wants to go, it jumps a little bit, and then until it overrides the friction of uh, someone's layout in the wheels, it won't move. So we'll give this a good clean, because it is quite dirty, however the pickups are fantastic. What a beaut. Right, we'll go over to the bench now, and uh, we'll start getting into it. Okay, so we're at the bench, now I want to get into this loco, and we'll have to remove the shell. First things first, I'm going to take the cover off, like that, and I can just slide it off this wire because I cut it earlier, I was having a look. This is normally attached to this, you'd, if you remove this you'll have to solder it back on. Right, with the tender cover off and that's safe now, we'll put that to one side. Now next what I want to do is remove this tender base, this just makes my life a whole lot easier and it's only this one flat-headed screw. So screw to one side and the chassis comes off, just slides off and that can go to one side. Now then, what we want to do is remove the body from this chassis, being careful not to squash any of this. And as you can see, you see all the dirt in there. That's not going to give us any favours. It's a bit, a bit dirty, so we'll give it a clean. At the front of the loco, there's a screw here, so you want to take this one out. It's it's fairly long, I think it's the longest screw on the loco. So we take that guy out, put that to one side, and then this, this bogey will slide out the front just like that. So put that one to one side, we'll clean that up later. Uh, what I like to do is just loosen this one off, maybe even take it all the way out. In fact, we'll just take it out. Okay, it's a bit shorter. Now, this trailing bogey will, if I pull on it, spring out like that, okay? They're a bit awkward to get in because the plastic pieces here like to spring around the chassis. So maybe start one side, if you want to put it back on and put it on like that, okay? So that's that. Now then, this should lift out of the loco, so I'm going to grab either side of here and and here, um, give it a wiggle and pull it, and whilst I'm pulling it out, I'm going to slide it this way, like so, and there we go, the motor's out. So we've got our chassis now, uh, what I want to do is remove this. And so this screw goes all the way to the other side and there's a nut. And you'll see this wire that runs up and over, that goes to the motor. 
So I'm going to hold the nut with my finger whilst I'm doing the screw from underneath. This just prevents the nut from turning, which will allow me to undo the screw. Now the nut is loose, and that's just off. Now, there we go, there's the nut, there's the wire, and if we, the screw's in it still, if I wiggle this up and out, the whole lot comes out. So these are all our pickups. Now, we'll turn this over. There's a, f uh, a flat-headed countersunk screw here. Undo that. So that's our countersunk screw. Now, this front here, this, this valve gear will now lift off. So I know I can pop this out the side of here. Being careful not to break the post. And the other side's already off. So our valve gear's just come off the front there. Okay, now that we've removed those wheels, we've got our, our chassis. Okay, just lift that up. And this side as well. Okay, and that, this guy lifts off. There's our spring. There we go. And that is our brush and our sleeve. Be careful here, but if I lift that up a little bit and wiggle it and start pulling it towards the front, it will actually detach from the metal chassis. It sort of slides in to this piece here. So this, being separate from the actual armature, is great because that means I can get in now just with a screwdriver and push down this. It's going to give me a lot more power to remove that sleeve for the bush. Now this guy, also, this is plastic. This is what was holding the links on the loco. And now it's out, so we'll clean that up. Get this guy out. And you can just see in the end, there's the brush. It's stuck in the sleeve. It's stuck in there with gunk. So again, this can go over there. I'll clean everything up and we'll reassemble it in a minute. So that's the bare chassis now. Good stuff. I will be removing these wires. So if you want to stay with DC um, and put it back together, you keep these wires on and you'll put them back where you removed them from. In my case, I'm going to actually cut this capacitor this just here. Now the reason I've done that is so that I've got a wire to solder to for the decoder at a later date. Okay, so now we've got our motor out and it's removed from the chassis. Get a marker pen, mark a line along the top of the magnet to this other blade. I tend to go one side so that it can only go back one way. That can be important later on. To disassemble this guy, these do lift out. Okay, that just makes your life easier for cleaning pieces. This magnet can pull out. And now we've got a the line there, we know which way back it will go in. I'll put this to one side out of the way so the magnet won't interfere with things. And then this blade, that can also lift out. Um, and then we're left with the motor. Now be careful here, but this will lift out one end. That, that white piece is a bearing, and this white piece is also a bearing. So up and out, I'll take the bearing off the end. Boop. And then this guy with the bearings, that can be taken apart, there we go, and it will be cleaned up. Okay, so this is our armature. Now, what's important to note is this end. Um, you see these lines? This is a commutator. Those lines need to be free of dirt because over time the brush fills the gap and shorts out the motor. Uh, in, in turn, what happens is it overheats and the coils there all overheat and short out and then your motor's kaput. That's why keeping maintenance or s servicing these is actually quite important or just keeping an eye on this. So what I like to do is I'll grab a cocktail stick. What you can do is push the dirt, if there is any, out the end of between those blades.
I've had some of these where they look like they're just one piece of metal and actually it's a miracle that they were running. Now once you've done that you can see all this dirt coming out and that's actually conductive paste essentially so it's just going to create a short. Okay so I'll just show you this right that's the motor now it's lovely and clean there on the end and all I'm using is IPA alcohol isopropyl alcohol it's 99.99 percent .99 alcohol uh, I've got it in this glass jar and I'll brush parts with, so the dirt comes off them and then what I do is use a bit of um, paper to dry the pieces a few moments later now we've got a nice clean motor we're gonna just put a dot a dot here of grease just on there just like that I'll go in the end so that can rotate freely on that bearing and not cause wear unnecessarily now what I'll do for the other bearing is just put a tiny bit of grease on that guy too and that can go in the other end what you really don't want is oil on this okay check that's free to move and that is free to move okay we'll put some we'll, I'll put a dot of grease on the worm gear um, at a later date one, once I've got it all together so I might not show you that but you will need to do that so whilst <laughs> to stop this falling out and try not to touch this degreased piece here I'm going to pinch that like that going to grab our chassis and just like we slotted it out earlier we're going to try and slide it back in I'm holding the forward edge of it against the chassis because then we need to see if this rotates freely which it does, lovely, and it's got a bit, just a tiny bit, of chatter. If it's pinching it too tight or, or, or clamping it down, you want to rectify that issue right here before carrying on, otherwise you're just wasting your time. Okay then, so what's coming up next here? Well, we've got our motor in, we know it spins freely. What I want to do next is put the brush in here. Uh, now, in your case, if you're just trying to fix your loco to go back on DC, then what you can do is just put the same bits back in. So this this, this is the brass sleeve, um, and then this would be the normal clamp, and then, you know, you just put it back in as, as I took it out, basically. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, DigiHats, uh, that's essentially what this is. Um, I'm going to put an insulating sleeve in, okay, that I'll go in first. Now the reason I'm doing this is to isolate the pickups from the motor power. So that's the sleeve there, uh, and this is all to aid me putting a decoder onto this train. So there's our brush, I'll just give it a little nudge, that's gone in. I've w soldered a, a, a sp the spring to this little wire here, this will be one of the motor wires. Uh, so that will go next. Then what I've got is this, and it's got a bit, a bit of heat shrink on there, so it insulates the spring from the chassis. That's what we're trying to do here, is just insulate the motor, which would normally connect to the chassis. We're trying to isolate it from the chassis. And Bob's your uncle. It's on. So that means now we can put the decoder on this loco and not have a short anywhere. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to super glue this, this wire to the side of the chassis because I don't want it getting scraped by the wheel at all. I'm just going to give these a wipe with some 2000 grit wet and dry paper.
Okay, so I've just cleared the dirt off of this with a, a, a hard bristle brush. Okay, boom, there goes your dirt. Next thing is to feed these wires through the arse of here. 